Flying, that's an amazing thing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. I mean, really, that is, in some ways, got to be one of the most extraordinary engineering achievements of all time, apart from the valve. Okay, <laughs> let's just agree on that. Um, but, you know, flying, the thing about engineering is you, you create airplanes, and also, I mean, engineers, we've created not just airplanes, but airplanes for everyone. Like, it's cheap, actually, to fly, amazingly. And it is open to, I mean, certainly not everyone in the world, that's, that would be too strong a statement, but it's open to lots and lots of people. That's an amazing achievement. And it's changed us. That's what, hap that's what happens. It, once you can fly, once you've flown, once you've connected across the globe, you're just a different person, aren't you? And it's very hard to go back, right? Can I just ask, can we just have the lights up? Is that possible? Just quickly. Don't worry, everyone. They won't see you looking at the screens. Okay. Um, who here, can you put your hands up if you could never fly again? If you feel like you could make a pledge to never fly again? There's zero hands going up, everyone. There's zero hands. Oh, there's one, two, there's a couple, of, there's a few. Most people, I've, I've done this several times. Most people, they, there's a few more. <laughs> Most people, the vast majority of people, having flown once, having, sit, having felt that connection to the world, and all, all it offers, feel that even though it's completely unsustainable at the moment, they still, it's the, probably the, one of the last things they'd be able to change in their lives. And lockdown kind of reinforced that, right? So making it sustainable is got to be very, very high on our list, hasn't it? Very, very high. And you're going to see more work about that in the department. It's happening now. All right, we can turn the lights down now. Thanks. So and my point is that it's changed you. Flight, it, it has changed you. It, it is, we are different people now. And the other thing that's changed us is the other communication method is the phone, right? And particularly the smartphone. That object has changed us. We, we actually probably can't go back from that either. If I did the same experiment, who would give up their phone forever? I don't think there'd be many people here who'd be putting up that, her hands. Um, but, so, the problem with the phone is, is that although we love it, and we're kind of into it, and it's changed us as people, it's designed to fail. So, we've kind of stumbled into the situation where Manufacturers are making things that are designed to be obsolescent, designed to break, designed to not work in a few years' time. And it's remarkable how many things in our lives are designed that way. And, and it, it's, it's not only is it terrible, because, I mean, the UK is the second in the world in, in the production of electronic waste. So we have mountains of waste, and we don't know what to do with it, and it's causing all sorts of problems in terms of environment and pollution and everything. And yet we still keep buying stuff, and the manufacturers still keep making stuff that breaks, and it isn't repairable, and you can't even change the battery on them, which seems mad. And it kind of is a kind of madness. But that is going to change. In fact, that is one of the big revolutions coming. And not just that, but it's coming, being spearheaded in this department. So we are, as a department, moving ahead very, very fast in trying to rid built-in obsolescence from electronic and other products. And we're doing it in many ways. We're doing it in the department practically. So the mech space repair workshops, go to them, take part in them, because this is crazy that we've stumbled into this situation. Um, we're doing work on repairability. We're working with the government. So we're working, about how to, uh, working with manufacturers to how to make things repairable that last. And we're also doing stuff on how to make materials and, and electronics heal themselves. So materials that heal themselves. So all these, kind of, all these kind of bits of engineering are happening in the department now. And you can take part in it. You can be a part of it. And I think you should be a part of it. Because the thing about designing a phone that has only got a lifetime of two years is it actually hurts us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I find it just physically painful that we're kind of doing that to ourselves. And we can make a phone that will last 50 years. We can do this on one charge. No, <laughs> perhaps we can't do that. But maybe, maybe we can. Some people are nodding. So look, there is really no limit to what we can do as engineers. And we need to sort of get a bit of a moral compass about this and start thinking about the fact that you know, just, just selling people stuff that breaks is, is no good. And we can do something about it, and we should. So everyone in here has a part to play. Um, and the other thing to say about this, the revolution, is that it's going to make us happier. I mean, there's nothing that makes an engineer more upset. I think you'll all agree. <laughs> it's not being banned from flying forever. It's not never having a phone. It's discovering an object that isn't quite working correctly. And I, can, I, 
I can just see a better way of making it. And that is the core of engineering, isn't it? We actually make things better, and we can do that with the products in our homes. So, viva the revolution! Repairability!